Welcome to the second tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about lighting and we're going to ma be making, uh, we're going to discuss two different techniques for lighting, um, vertex, per vertex lighting and per fragment lighting. So why are we talking about lighting? Well if you are using LEDworks, because this is deferred render, lighting will be applied. You really don't need to worry about lighting in your actual shaders. Or your fragment shader. However, it's kind of important to understand how lighting works because in order to understand how to do normal maps, you kind of need to know what's going on behind the scene with regular lighting. Uh, today we're just going to discuss directional lights though. We're gonna modify the shaders we used last time. Note though that I actually did have to change the ambient light shader um, so if you are trying to replicate what I'm doing, you're going to have to do the same thing. There's a little bit of a red tint that's applied to everything. We're going to start with vertex lighting. So go to your vertex shader. Um, since we're using a directional light, we're going to, to make a new directional light. Uh, we're going to model this as a vector because a directional light is essentially a vector. So let's make a new variable. We're calling it light direction. So light dir equals we're going to make it um, 1 1 0 0 so it's going to be a light that goes along the x-axis okay so what do we need to do with lighting um, so the big idea behind lighting is this. So you have a light, in this case our light is going across the x-axis. Right. And we need to determine the how light each point is. Well, we can determine this based on the normal of the point. So the normal of a vertex is generally orthogonal to the triangle surrounding it. So in this case, if we were looking at this vertex, right here, uh, your thought, or the normal would probably be pointing out along this direction. So the closer that this vector um, goes against the vector coming in, because the vector coming in is coming from uh, the right side of the screen going to the left side, if the normal from the left uh, from here is going right, that should be very well lit. Whereas if the normal is here, it'll be less lit because it's going kind of against this vector coming from right to left. And of course, if it's behind the mesh, it's going along that vector, which means it shouldn't be lit at all. So this is a general principle behind this. Uh, so we will be using a dot product in order to calculate this. Uh, first, we're going to have to specify a new invariable, which will be vec3. We can get the normal by using this variable. Okay, so we have the this normal right now. Again, like the position, this is a local coordinate. So we need to turn this local coordinate into a global coordinate. And so we'll do that the same way we did with the position. However, we don't need to use the projection camera matrix because all we're we're not actually calculating a screen coordinate. We're still using since the light direction is actually in world space we want to compare this the normal in world space to the light direction in world space so let's do that um, we're also going to specify a new out variable though uh, we'll call it light which will be the light intensity okay so we're also we're going to make a normal that's uh, this will be the true normal that's in world space so we get the vertex normal. We need to multiply the matrix by it. 
or sorry, uh, matrix times vertex normal. Um, and the matrix is a four by four matrix, so we have to add another value to the normal. Additionally, uh, so if I try compiling, there will be an issue about this being a vec4 and this being a vec3. So we're going to have to turn this we're going to have to turn this into a vec3. There's actually a pretty easy way to do that. Um, if you you can actually specify the coordinates like this. It's kind of weird, but so if you wanted to get all four coordinates, it would be x, y, z, w. But if you just want to get the first three, it'd just be x, y, z. You can also do r, g, b, a. It doesn't matter, uh, but a lot of times you might want to use this for colors. It doesn't matter which one you pick, though. It'll still get the same. Uh, it'll still get the same values. So it seems reasonable to do x, y, z here. So we'll do that. So we have the normal, the new calculated normal. This is in world space. Now we need to calculate the light. So light equals, uh, and like I said before, we're going to be using a dot product. If you you should, um, if you're not sure what a dot product does, you should look it up. Basically, uh, zero dot the dot product will return zero if the if two vectors are orthogonal to each other. A dot product of one would be two vectors that are parallel and going in the same direction. A dot product of negative one would be two vectors that are parallel but going in opposite directions. This is only true of dot products of normal vectors though. Um, so in, in reality when we do have a directional light we would I guess invert the vector but it doesn't really matter because you can just do that manually. Um, but for now we'll just we'll keep it like this just for simplicity. Uh, so you'll do a dot product between the normal and the light direction. Uh, one other thing about doing a dot product is you'll generally want to normalize the the vectors, which means you set their length to one. And these are all built-in commands, uh, partly because they're generally supported by hardware. So it's a good idea to use these commands rather than to try to implement it yourself. Okay, so, so we specified a unique output variable from the vertex shader. Now we need to bring that variable into here. So a floating point, I think I forgot to talk about this, a floating point is just a decimal number basically. Floating point is a decent precision for this so we're going to be using that. If you could use a double if you wanted but those you have to uh, change some of the the vector for it to a larger precision vector for anyway uh, so we're going to multiply so this is a lighting factor basically the light intensity in general you'd want to multiply this by the light um, the, the whole color by the light and let's see the result uh, well that's kind of an odd result we have this severe banding going on this is actually uh, due to the alpha channel. Uh, for some reason, the usually you would use the alpha channel for transparency. That's not the case on LEDworks. I'm not actually sure why that um, why it would affect banding like that. But in order to solve this, you would just replace the RGB values, and you get a smoother curve. So it looks kind of okay. This is the um, it might be hard to see, but this is lighter than the backside same thing with this sphere but it's kind of weird because it depends on your um, position if you move this farther back it'll become darker um, if you move it closer it'll become lighter we don't want that though because this is actually just a light vector right so it shouldn't matter where this is positioned it should look the same 
Uh, so we're going to try to solve that. Basically, if you multiply the matrix by the normal, um, you're multiplying the transformation uh, to a point in space because there's no indication that this is a vector versus a point. So in order to solve this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to multiply this matrix. Um, so we're actually going to have to multiply it by a zero vector. So the normal is going to be a point off from the origin. So we need to subtract the origin from this because now the normal is somewhere somewhere in space. It's probably not actually around here. It's probably somewhere. Uh, I don't know. Somewhere around the scene. But that shouldn't matter. We're just going to uh, reposition around the origin. And to do that, you would multiply 0, 0, 0, 0 by the matrix, the transformation matrix. And of course, we need to get the x, y, z to make it a vec3. Okay. And yeah, sorry. I It should just be 0, 0, 0, and then 1. Okay. Like I said before, I messed up, uh, but this is a homogeneous coordinate, so we would always make the last value equal to 1. Anyway, now it looks okay. We can position, change it. We should be able to rotate it, and no matter how you rotate it, the lighting is the same, which is what we want. So this is uh, vertex lighting. It's pretty efficient because you only have to calculate the light per vertex, and usually the triangles at least in modern day games, I, uh, they're usually bigger than a fragment in size. But you can see some artifacts. For example, it may be hard to see on this computer, but there is, along the edges are often, um, it's almost these seams you can kind of see. It's kind of, it's more evident on this side where you see that the, uh, it's not like a precise circle. Um, you can see it kind of here too. It looks kind of like an octagon, um, the very white area. We want to kind of fix that. Uh, and one way to f to do a little bit better, if we change this to per fragment lighting. Okay, so we're actually going to keep a lot of these values because I wanted to compare the fragment lighting with the with the vertex lighting. So in order to do this, we need to do a few things. One, we need to output the normal because we're going to calculate this dot product inside of this fragment shader instead. So we're going to add a new out variable called out um, we can again we can name these however we want because we're defining um, unique we're defining unique variables that will be taken in to the fragment shader. Okay, so we, we're basically connecting those two. Whoops, wrong. Okay, so this should be a vec3. Okay, so we're going to turn this normal. So the output would equal this new normal we, we computed. Okay, um, we're actually going to copy this because I don't, it's not worth it to just pass it through. Okay, so we have the light direction here. We're going to calculate a new lighting, and I'm going to comment this out because we're going to be uncommenting it once we compare the results. Um, so we're going to make a new light, uh, we'll call it light2, equals dot normalize, uh, let's see, the v normal and normalize light direction, and so that's light2. Okay, so now we have a, uh, this is actually per fragment lighting. So you can actually kind of tell, again, it might be hard to see this. Um, and I will, 
In fact, I will make this a uh, single viewport so we can see it a little bit better. But it should be a little bit better in terms of um, the lighting. It should look a little more like a circle. Uh, whereas if we change back to the pixel lighting, you can kind of see that it's, a, it's not as smooth. However, again, with the vertex lighting, you get better performance in general because you don't have to, you'll be doing less of these dot product computations. In, however, fragment shaders, you of course doing fragment lighting, you do have some advantages though. And anyway, one of the uh, big points you should have gone from this tutorial is that you'll see that there is actually sort of this interpolation between black and white and this is done through the rasterizer itself so you don't have to worry about that uh, note that we're making the rasterizer even with our this this is actually kind of neat but when you look at our light variable this will get raster or this will get interpolated automatically which is kind of nice that's why we can do the pixel lighting or sorry the per vertex lighting Whereas a fragment, we're actually interpolating the normal, not the light.